Hello and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts and I'm one of the co-founders of that service. And joining me on the morning of Tuesday, the 4th of July, 2023, from right here in Sydney, is Mr. Jonathan Fisher, who's the CEO of Cauldron Energy, ASX CXU. Jonathan, good morning. Morning, Stuart. Thanks for having me. So Cauldron Energy, um, a lot of people bought the stock because of a, a uranium project in Western Australia called Yanri, but that's not what, what we're going to talk about today. Um, uh, you've had to put that one on that project on ice, unfortunately, because uh, the, the Western Australian government uh, decided to to, to uh, uh, block all uh, uranium project developments. Although we, th we think that will change. Yeah, look, uh, the the global nuclear renaissance um, is happening. There's a future for Yanri, and it's not as far off as people think. Right. Um, but we have diversified our strategy to the broadly exploring the energy transition. Our first uh, foray is picking up the Melrose uh, and nickel project. Uh, which are just in Dalwallinu, conveniently, just a couple of hours from Perth. Now, that's got me excited. Um, if you've ever, folks, if you've ever driven up uh, from Perth to Mika, at about the halfway mark, you come to uh, Dalwallinu. Uh, so, sealed roads the whole way to get to your project area. Uh, and you Absolutely. pick yep. 1,500 kilometres of prime uh, nickel ground, and not just nickel, but uh, but platinum and palladium as well, uh, with uh, uh, Chalice and their Barabara project uh, just down the road as well. Um, so uh, you're uh, you're hunting in elephant country right now. Oh, mate, the the West Seal Garden is a great um, great area for exploration and and has received uh, a lot of interest um, in recent times. As you know, we've got we've we've got Chalice just above us. Uh, we've also got Chalice's Julemar project, obviously a bit further to the south. Yet um, our interpretation would say that we're on, we're on the same sort of geological trend there. Um, and just about ten k's, I think, to the to the east. Uh, is Nickel X, and actually we do have some some contiguous ground with Nickel X on some of the tenements. As as you said, we've got a very large tenement package here, about fifteen hundred square k's. Right, and in the middle of your territory, uh, IGO discovered a small deposit which is excised from your ground as well. But um, um, that's telling you that there's something out there worth worth looking at. Yeah, look, there's. I mean, IGO put about a thousand holes into the ground, so we've got fantastic historic data. Um, there was a little gold um, project um, that was run off the back of that, small scale, but something like fifteen grams a ton. You know, nice if you can get it. Um, we're not looking for gold in that area, um, which is actually what independents were uh, looking for. We, we're looking for repeats of jewel mass uh, mineralization. So that's sort of nickel, copper, and as you mentioned, platinum group metals. Right. So it, it's it's got everything that uh, that the chalice has, has made us all excited about that uh, mafic uh, ultra mafic uh, complex. Yep. Um, you've just had your geophysicists look at it. And they've done some inversion modeling uh, across the ground, and there are there are uh, at least four targets that are flashing like a Christmas tree at the moment. Uh, they're, they're just begging to be drilled right underneath uh, some of that air core. Tell us what you've got. Yeah, look, this is this is really exciting, and and if people understand, you know, the the the, the mag, you know, you usually see these maps, and they look like red and blue and and stuff, or green stuff like that, yellow. Right. Um, what the the uh, engineers are able to do is remodel that and actually give you three D interpretation of what's below the ground and where it is. Right. Um, and what they've defined is uh, an anomaly um, that sits quite shallow. It's about 100 metres um, below ground or 60 metres below the deepest of the old shallow holes. And it lines up perfectly with uh, the first part is what we call target one, um, where we... That was we very imaginative of you, Jonathan, target one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we were going to go with something a bit more racy, but um, decided to be factual. And... Um, Look, that target one is where the historic results, you know, returned up to 0.47% nickel. Um, and it, it just lines up perfectly with the AeroMag, the inversion, the historical data. Um, and we're very excited to get out on the ground. I'm actually going out there next week um, to, to sort of confirm landowner access, you know, get some reads from the physical markers on the ground um, and work as quickly as we can towards drilling that area. Right. Now, uh, your, your neighbours in, in Chalice, when they got started with Julemar, one of the things that people uh, were, were happy about with with uh, Chalice was they didn't have to worry about uh, native title issues because it was in state land, um, it was state forest, obviously. Um, have you got to go and, uh, and, and uh, do some native title issues before you can you can get going on this one? Oh, so we're blessing and a curse. We're in green, green title um, agricultural land, so the farmers right. own their land. Right. Um, we've commenced that process already, actually, and I'm just really pleased to say that, uh, and a shout out to all the Dow Wallenew farmers out there, they're all they're all such nice people. Um, all, uh, actually, there's been very little turnover of land even since IGO uh, drilled it last sort of 15 years ago. Um, they're all very keen for us to get back out there. 
um, and and very excited to to see what could happen. And you know they understand um, the process well um, in terms of you know land access and um, the arrangements under which that happens. So um, no native title, good good um, good landowner relations. Um, obviously, there is the, the the recent West Australian Heritage Act uh, coming in recently, which you know can potentially just cause a few more little uh, little hurdles to go through, but we don't see any issues. All right. Um, so uh, the uh, Air Corps obviously um, um, led to this particular ground. Uh, we're, we're drilling target one shortly. What's the um, uh, timing on that? Yes. Yeah, so so I, I, my first reaction was to drill, drill, drill straight away. Um, but I'm, you know, have the benefit of very, very good technical team, and 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 I and I we all work really well together. Look, the, the desire is probably to actually do another EM survey, um, which we can do quite sh short notice. Um, and if you know anything about EM, you've got two options there: you can fly it with an aero EM, or, or you can do a, a, um, a ground based loop. Yeah, and, uh, and you're arrangement a ground based loop, I presume. Um, look, we're going to confirm that actually post discussions with the landowners next week. Okay. Um, you can get higher powered aero EM rigs these days, which which can do a good job as well. Um, ground ground loop um, is also preferable. We just need to work in with the farmers actually and their cropping rotations and things like that. So that's the importance of getting on the ground, walking over it, and and seeing exactly exactly where we want to go. Um, but that's a fairly short process, and then after that, you know, that's the third bit of evidence we need to lock down those drill holes, and then we go and drill it. Right. Talk to us about the the, the grades that uh, IGO got with that air core all those years ago. We're talking a, a peak about uh, 0.47 on, on the nickel, but tantalisingly, it's good for the, uh, the 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 platinum and palladium as well. That that could be interesting. Yeah, look, we, we're very confident that the area is anomalous in in in, in platinum palladium as well. Um, as per per chalice, we've been clear that we're we're chasing sort of dual mass style repeats um, of the right. mineralisation. Right. Um, the the grades that we've we've had there up to 0.47 compare really well. Um, to Julema, but you know everyone knows that Julema. You don't. You're not interested in Julema for the grade. You're interested in Julema for the scale. Right. Um, what we've seen with this first defined anomaly under the inversion modelling is it's pretty big. Um, you know the first anomaly is is two kilometres long, three hundred fifty metres wide, and who knows how deep. Um, and and it 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 kicks in from hundred metres uh, below surface. So you know we're we're excited about the potential scale of what what we've got there. Right. So um, it, it's now uh, three years since uh, those wonderful uh, early intersections that Chalice was getting uh, in Julemite down to the south. And uh, and obviously um, uh, the, the news has continued to be good there. Um, every uh, man, woman and their dog has been um, uh, trying to take ground in the in this particular uh, area. How competitive was the um, uh, 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 the rush to get land? In your, in your case, you were able to peg most of your project. Yeah, so we picked up. Uh, we were aware of some tenements that were available in the market, which we we sort of hoovered up quick quietly. Um, and then, as, as part of it, you know, whenever you pick up a tenant package, you know, you do a do a review of the surrounding area um, and hoover up what's available. And so we were able to peg uh, some tenements surrounding the core. Um, that that said, the the core tenements that we're looking at with with target one are the ones that we actually bought. Okay, so um, uh, another another magnetic survey. And then we'll go um, uh, mobilise the drill rigs if, if uh, so long as the farmers are, are happy with that on our uh, on our first site. But it's fair to say that before Christmas we could could be um, be uh, uh, mobilising our rigs to to uh, go uh, explore uh, this interesting neighbourhood. Yeah, look, the 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 good case on that um, is yes, well before Christmas. Um, you know, there is an alternative case which says, well, hang on, and I'll confirm this. You know, literally next week when I'm out there looking at looking at the land is that if we have to work around crops and everything, it may be January. Um, but you know, we've got a we've got a really strong um, forward work plan as well. There's more inversion modelling uh, to come. I think there's going to be more targets identified out of that um, and more anomalies um, to come. Um, stay tuned on that. Um, and you know the the EM will, I am sure, prevent produce some good results. And if you saw uh, our neighbours, Nickel X actually just ran some EM a few weeks ago, re reported those uh, EM conductors to the market, and you saw a very very strong price performance on the back of that. Okay, um, Jonathan, tell us a bit about yourself. Up until uh, late last year, you were with TNG Limited working on Mount Peak, uh, and uh, now you're uh, now you're back at the coalface uh, hustling up some sh shareholder value uh, elsewhere. Uh, take us way back in time. What's what's been your career so far? Uh, look, uh, Perth boy, born and bred, but uh, as as 
many uh, of us do spend some time in London and, and my time in London was at, at Rothschild in the natural resources team there. Uh, I spent a lot of time actually in nuclear energy, uh, which is why the uranium opportunity at Yanri really, really, um, really resonates with me. And I've been a, a champion in nuclear energy uh, for as long as I can remember. I, I looked uh, up the dictionary the other day under the word patience, and there's a photograph of you there because it's going to take a little patience to, uh, to, to break out what is an enormous amount of shareholder value potentially built in, up in uh, Yanri over the years. Well, so look, there's no company that is more exposed and more levered to the upside on a change in uranium policy in WA. Um, Yanri was one of the most advanced projects um, prior to the WA government's change of policy. Unfortunately, it wasn't one of the ones that was grandfathered through the approvals process. So we we really were the company that lost the most value um, out of that policy. And therefore, we do uh, stand to gain the most value back, not only once that policy changes, but... Once momentum builds towards a policy changing, people will understand the inherent value that is in January, um, and therefore, you know, the, the stock should start to move. The the thing I'd note also is that, you know, with the global re nuclear renaissance on the way, you know, a lot of people think, oh, we're not going to get a change in policy until we get a change in government, and I don't think that's true. I think I think the WA electorate and the people understand that, you know, nuclear is a really important part. Um, of the energy transition and, and providing those zero carbon megawatt hours on a baseload basis is really important. So I, I think the WA government will, will start to see the view of the people and that we may see a change in policy even before we see a change in government. Right. It's instructive to me, uh, talking with um, uh, uh, American friends of mine, most Americans, when you poll them, are, are in favour of nuclear power. Uh, that's that's part of the renaissance we're talking about. And I suspect here in Australia, we're not too far behind that in terms of coming around to accept that this is this is part of the energy transition. So look, we, we've had some recent polling released, I think it was on May the 16th, um, in, a, in a national newspaper around the, the national view on nuclear power and uranium mining in Australia is strongly positive. Um, there's also been um, recent polling, um, follow-up polling on the AUKUS uh, submarine deal, and, and that remains, so that's follow-up polling from, from one year before, and both polls show that the AUKUS deal is extremely popular in Australia. Now, that might be for a variety of reasons. It might just be because nuclear subs are just really cool technology. I kind of think they are. Uh, it might be a, a little bit of, uh, you know, people wanting to stand up to China, um, or it might be an energy transition and climate related um, view. But, you know, those new subs, they're really, really popular. And the WA government, for example, is crowing about the fact that they actually get to home port um, half of those subs in WA. Right. They're very, very, very keen on doing that. Yet they still have a policy which says it's unsafe to mine uranium. Yet they're saying it's safe for their, you know, our sailors to not only live next, like literally five meters away from a, a small modular reactor, but to have it parked off the coast of Perth. Those two, th those things are completely inconsistent with each other, and I think are actually inconsistent with the view of the people. And therefore, I'm, I'm quite confident that that policy is going to change maybe sooner than people right. think. But in the meantime, that's that's in the um, that's in the uh, bottom drawer of of uh, of cauldron energy, and you've got something that can uh, get the punters pretty interested in two thousand and twenty three. Um, mm. uh, talk to us uh, in closing. How did you end up uh, uh, picking this particular part of Western Australia as your um, as your next focus? Well, in yeah, the, so, the uh, Melrose uh, project, I mean. Yeah. So look, we defined our uh, our new strategy of exploring the energy transition. Um, obviously, that you know uranium is a core part of that. But we said, well, what other are the energy transition metals? Yeah, nickel, obviously. Focus yeah. on? And nickel was was clearly one of them. Um, we like WA, obviously, as a mining jurisdiction, and so we started looking around to say, well, okay, where 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 have people had good nickel exploration discoveries? And actually, around the West Yulgarn and the and the sort of the Julemar Belt. Um, you know, really, really stood out for us. Um, there's a number of benefits. You know, you're close to Perth. Um, actually, there's no native title, which is great. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of historic data. So we were able to really walk up to the start line or well, run up to the start line and get going as opposed to, you know, starting from a standing start. So we're very excited about what Melrose can bring to the party. And actually, you know, this when you take the trouble to, to sort of digest what is all there and then you look at our market cap and you go, oh, hang on, there's something... The market hasn't yet realised what we've picked up in, in, in the Melrose project. All right. Let's uh, let's look uh, very closely. Jonathan Fisher, thanks for joining Stocks Down Under. Thanks, Stuart. Appreciate it.